Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Cook. I'm in sustainability and leadership class with these three great professors. And I'm going to be doing sustainability in the food industry. This is a great topic because you don't really see the polluting factors in the food industry. You just go in there, you go into the food store, and you just get your meat right off there, and you don't think anything's polluting. But there actually is significant pollution in the food industry. And it's not like uh, your car where you just get into it and you start it up and you can see the fumes coming right out of the car and you can see the polluting. You know, so this is a really good topic and that's why I'm adamant about it. And we're just going to go straight into it here with food industry as a whole. The entire system of food production, such as the use of farming machinery, spraying of fertilizer, and transportation of products causes 17.3 metric tons of greenhouse gases a year. And this is very significant. This is more than double the total emissions of the United States. So what we're talking about here is every country's food industry, and it makes up 17.3 metric tons of greenhouse gases a year. And just this food industry of the planet is double the total emissions of the United States. You know, we're talking about the emissions of the United States, um, everything. We're talking about every industry, cars, um, the food, obviously, and everything else. So it is very significant. And the global production of food is responsible for a third of all planets heating gases emitted by human activity. So all human activity, and this is a third of all of it. So it's, it's pretty significant. Now we're getting into the biggest uh, form of sustainability and polluter issue is the beef and the meats uh, in, in the industry. And usually the uh, people like to just nitpick this because uh, you're killing animals. It's... It's kind of not really why it's significant right now. It's because of what we're going to get into here. And it's the use of cows, pigs, and other animals for food, as well as livestock feed, is responsible for 57% of all food production emissions. So this is obviously more than half of all food. We're talking about um, all the vegetables. We're talking about all different things. And just in over 50% of it is from the animals. So that's pretty crazy when you think about that. And the difference in emissions between meat and plant production is stark. To produce one kilogram of wheat, 2.5 kilograms of greenhouse gases are emitted. A single single kilo of beef, meanwhile, creates 70 kilograms of emissions. Now, you can see the crazy difference from the meat and plant. That's why a lot of people like to go plant. Um... And plant is, I mean, is probably a little bit better than better for you uh, in the long run. But beef is the highest emission producer out of all other animals by far. And we're going to go into that in the uh, next slide with a chart. All right, now what we're going to gravitate towards on this slide is going to be uh, this this chart right here. Now, what this chart is showing us is different areas of the food industry. We have wheat, corn, beef, and lamb. And what it's showing us here is land use per ton of protein consumed and the emissions it took to get that uh, protein. Now, when we look at wheat and corn and, and the upper portion of this chart now, we can see that a lot of land is not needed um, for how much protein it's given us. And now you look at the emissions too, it's, it's virtually nothing. Now... When we look at down at the chart, we look at the beef and lamb here. Now, you would think that the beef cow, it's a big animal. It, it's given off a lot of meat and a lot of protein. But now, the land it needed for that is does not outweigh it. Because you can see the chart right here. It is significantly um, bigger land use per the protein it gets. And the emissions it's given off is significantly higher than the third, dairy. And, of course, on the left, we have the beef cow and the lamb. All right, now we have two leaders pretty significant in the climate scene. And these guys are not radical at all. They're not um, over the top with their ideas for climate. I mean, they have significant research on what they're talking about, and I can definitely get behind them. 
Uh, first, we have uh, Dr. Jason Box uh, has led major studies on the effects climate has on glaciers in the poles. He has led the Extreme Ice Survey and the Dark Snow Project. And the Dark Snow Project, which was the first crowdfunded trip scientific expedition to Antarctica. So this is pretty pretty interesting guy here. Um, Jason Box is more of a climate change leader as a whole and does not really gravitate towards one side like the cars or or um, the food or anything like that. And we go and his picture is on the left there um, in Antarctica, which is pretty cool. And uh, Dr. Charles Keeling, um, this one's this guy is a lot more famous and uh, has made many research findings on climate change and the levels of CO2 entering the atmosphere. He has multiple studies and has pretty much world renowned now for figuring out what the CO2 levels that we're getting into the atmosphere. All right, now what we're gonna be getting into in this slide is how this ties into the UN SDG, which is the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. The goal in making the food industry more environmentally friendly and sustainable is closely tied to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Ending hunger is the second goal and countries that follow a more sustainable food process will achieve this. Now we see the, the on the bottom right, uh, the zero hunger second goal. And this is probably one of the hardest goals that they have on their website. And this is due to many reasons, but we, we could go further to achieve this um, by just stopping waste and stopping um, just throwing out all different types of food when we could be giving these these types of food to the homeless and the hungry. Um, but we get into the next one. The UN's 13th goal of climate action would tie into lowering the greenhouse gases by lowering the overall production of meat. This is obviously the hardest thing to do um, for the climate action, but just due to how many Americans actually eat meat. But these two goals are needed for the future of our planet to ensure a good future for the next generations. Now, when we look at the meat area on that, um, we have two solutions in the next coming slides that what I what I believe that we can really go towards to uh, help the climate um, better than just lowering the production of meat. We'll get into that now. All right, now we're going to get into the first solution that I have now that's really going to help the environment without putting too much strain and harm onto the farms and the food industry as a whole. So one of the biggest issues is the methane produced from a cow. The methane comes from their burps and manure left over. Methane is a major greenhouse gas and warms the planet significantly faster than CO2. Many farms leave the cow's dung to rot in the sun, letting methane seep into the atmosphere. This issue could be solved with regulating the cow's diet and assuring that farms frequently pick up manure. Enteric methane inhibitors, which are feed additives and can reduce methane in the gut. Some of these studies on this additive has shown to reduce methane by 20 to 98%. I mean, this would be crazy to sense the animal production is more than 50% of the pollution in the food industry and beef is most of that. If you can reduce most of that pollution by 98%, I mean, it's going to have a massive impact on the environment. And having feed regulated to ones that only use these ad uh, additives would greatly benefit the climate issue and having government employees check up on these huge mass producing farms to ensure they are picking up after the cows. This would be great for the environment as stated. All right, now we're going to get into pretty much the last slide here. And this is my second solution. And this is going to be more about sustainability um, and kind of uh, more of the land use. Uh, the sustainability and use of resources is the lowest with the lamb and beef industry. Uh, we saw on, figure, uh, on the slide four with the figure of the chart, and it shows that the land use per ton of protein consumed of the lamb and beef are the highest by far. This is an issue of efficiency that ties into sustainability. The problem could be fixed if companies were regulated to a certain amount of land for cow grazing, um, or lamb grazing, obviously, that um, ties into the cattle, that, the number of cattle that they have. Uh, this would ensure if they get more cattle that they can get more land for those animals. Uh, this set number of acres would be decided by the farmers and the government to ensure a reasonable answer uh, for the number of acres that they need is achieved. Now, even in the picture that you see right there, that's um, 
significant land for grazing for the cows that they don't really even need. I mean, this this uh, law and this regulation would be more towards the big um, companies uh, just trying to get more and more land that they don't really even need. This wouldn't be really a regulation for people's homes, farms that really have four or five cows. This would be for the hundreds of cows um, that uh, these companies have just grazing, um, going endlessly anywhere um, and dropping dung and dew uh, so it can seep into the atmosphere. So regulating the number of acres that they could have would definitely benefit um, the planet as a whole.